What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger. That, of course, is my quiet but never silent partner, the Alexis Arguello puppet. And back with the Boxing Hall of Fame hat, your boy, Frank Benjis. We here with another one. Yeah, and a good one, too. Good up-and-coming guy, man, with a lot of confidence, man. I've just been checking out his uh, Facebook page because I like to do a little bit of trolling before we have guys on here, see where they're at in life. And uh, this guy firmly believes, and I like when a guy firmly believes, that he's the best 122-pounder out there, even dropping the name of Niawa Inoue. And he's here right now, so shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. Let's get him on here, man. I'm going to tell him right now, man, just how much I love the confidence, too. There he is. What's up, Elijah? Hey, and he's what's going on? How y'all doing, man? Well, a lot better now that you're here, man, and we able to get this going on, man. And listen, man, first of all, I got to say that before we have anybody on here, I always like to troll the last couple of posts on the Facebook page, man. First of all, congratulations. I know you just want to fight back in March, but I love the confidence, man. The best 122-pounder dropping in a way's name. I love all that shit, man. Absolutely, and I and see. Okay, cool. We, you just uh, you're right up my alley. I just wanted to make sure it was come, you know, uh, it was uh, proper, and you know, for me to speak speak freely. You know, what listen, I'm saying? Man, like, you speak, I, listen, you speak freely on here. You cuss. You do whatever, man. I don't mind the Alexis Arguello puppet. Doesn't mind. We don't give a shit what's going on, man. We're, we're, okay. I just like the fact that I I love the confidence, man. I feel like, and I've talked about this on the show before. I feel like sometimes, man. There's not that little bit of, uh, you know, the guys just aren't as chippy as they used to. I like when a guy has a little confidence and is not afraid to call some guys out. You know what I mean? Man, honestly, the the, the crazy part about that is um, I feel like just in society as a whole, we've gotten so sensitive to that aspect. And I've come, that's always something I, I've admired. I've studied the best of that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. From, from, you know, Prince, Prince Nassim to, you know, Adrian Broner to... You know all those guys. I, I love. I love talking shit, and I and I'm I'm gonna continue to talk shit. But at the end Absolutely. of the day, the most important factor, I back it up every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, we just gotta say real quick before we go any further. We know AB does not back that up, but that's okay. Oh <laughs> uh, well, 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 I'll say. <laughs> I'll well, he say didn't form, do. Well, he didn't. Form, well, he didn't uh, the other night. He, he, didn't the other night. <laughs> he didn't the other night. Didn't the other night, and he even lost a tooth in the. Pro that's not a good look. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that was going to happen either, man. But, you know, who knows? A.B.'s best years are probably behind him, man. But uh, I, I got to ask you, first and foremost, man, you know, we've had so many guests on here, man. It always seems like it's the same story with how guys get into the into the sport. It, it always seems like it's one of two things or both things. Uh, it's either a father pushes him into it or they were getting into a lot of scraps as a kid or sometimes both. Well, what was it for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a it was a bond a bonding. It wasn't a push though. It was just a bonding experience between uh, father and son. You know, me and yes. my father. He was a former kickboxer. He was a kickboxing world champ. Um, you know, he uh, slash martial artist, and he just wanted to, you know for his son to know how to fight. And ultimately, it, it was just that glue that brought us closer together. Ultimately, yeah. and um, that's cool. It just manifested into what it is today. You know, I, I never I never thought I was gonna be a boxer. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, um, it chose me, you know, and uh, ended up uh, after uh, having my daughter. Um, that was when I really, like, decided, okay, this is gonna, I'm going to make a lifestyle out of it. Yeah. Well, I just got to say, this is a bonding experience for me and my father. That's my father right there. This yeah. will be this our bonding experience. But yeah. I, I want to know, because you brought up Prince Nassim, and Adrian Broner and stuff. When you got into this and started, like, did you have idols coming up as a young age? Like, who who was who was you a fan of? Who did you really look to for that um that sort of like idol idol experience? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I didn't have any Bison idols. So that's kind of crazy. Like, I, I never, I didn't. My my idols were Wesley Snipes and Michael J. White. The two, nice. The two black superheroes. Those are my yeah. those are my idols. You know what I'm saying? Spawn, yeah. Spawn and Blade. Those. Blade. those yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Wesley Snipes, man, is such a badass. He don't even got to pay his fucking taxes if you don't yeah. want it. I love the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like I'm talking about, like anything with them in it, I would watch for sure. Like I was tuned in, and you know, it just I don't know, man. Just how everything kind of just came about. It was very organic. 
And um, I just, I've always had a, a relentlessness uh, to my approach to life. Uh, that's just what I was taught as a kid. And um, boxing, you know, it, it, it naturally just, you know, coexisted in, with, with that. You know, it, just, it worked. It, it meshed and it was just, shit, I kept going with it. And I just didn't, I never took no for an answer and I never quit no matter what, no matter what, um, all the circumstances that pro even prolonged my career. Because really, I should have been, I should should have been champion years ago. Yeah. To be honest, it's just you know, it just it is what it is. But you know, life, um, you know, God, God puts everybody through different uh, trials of life. Everybody has a different path. I'm no doubt. Mine, and I'm here now. How old? How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Hey, you right on track, kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now, and and so, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, uh, from your Facebook page, your last fight, uh, you did go through a little adversity. Was that the first time you'd been on the canvas? No, actually, my second. Uh, and, my my and first loss. Those, my first you loss. Think, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say my, you know, my first loss. I actually did. Uh, uh I was see like, the, even though it doesn't get uh, accredited for some reason, I'm one of the first. 122 pound fighters who fought as high as 35 uh in the early part of my career because i didn't know about cutting weight i didn't know a damn thing about it i come from oklahoma city it's not a boxing state by any means it's a football state we all you know that's that's a, a parody everybody knows that so I, I just didn't have the knowledge and then once i acquired the knowledge and i got around a, a formidable team who was a, actually able to give me the game that i needed then boom look where we are i'm i'm t on the 10 fight win streak eight by knockout and, and and i believe if i'm not mistaken that you have cracked the top 10 rankings in your weight division right like you're getting up there aren't you i don't know i'm top five now uh, yeah, I thought I thought I saw that. Yeah, and congratulations so we, we on that. We cracked, we cracked top five, so we top. I'm, that, I'm number four, number four in the WBA, and um, I'm number seven in the WBO. Um, I think number eleven in the IBF, and then number fifteen or sixteen in the WBC. But I was I was number ten in the WBC, but politics made me drop or whatever. Oh yeah, there's always the, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's always going to exist in boxing. It seems like you know, <laughs> it's one of those. Do you think the possibility of the NBA fight is like on horizon for you, or do you think like um, before you get that? Out? Honestly, it really depends on him. But if, because uh, I know that he has, I, I believe, two more fights at 122, if I'm not mistaken. And I yep. think he fights September, and I think he'll have one more next year, and then he'll then he's going up, if I'm not mistaken. Now, um, cause he's already he's already fought and knocked out Neri. So, and you know, I know I heard about him having talks with to, to fight Sam Sam Goodman, and then um, what's his name MJ. Yeah. Now, yeah. Me after this fight, I will be I I should be number two in the WBA. Yeah. So therefore, my next fight after that should be an eliminator for the title. Right. Yeah. So you know whether that's to get MJ or whoever the fuck else I need to beat in order to to get that. Yeah. My whole my whole mindset is, is straight and narrow. Is get the title. I don't give a fuck who I got to go through right. to get it. Whoever I need to beat to get it. it that is as simple as that. So my plan in my mind is okay. Win this fight, knock him out. Then fight for the eliminator, knock him out. And then if anyway to there. Uh, be in a way if I get to fight for the title, then I'll fight for the title against whoever I need to fight. But and, of course, and, I would love to fight. And interestingly enough, I'm not so sure from what I'm reading on different boxing pages if in a way still won't be at 122 because they were saying his last two fights against Topolis and Luis Neri, you know, he did look susceptible. He didn't look like he liked being in there with other big punchers. I don't know how quick he's going to want to be to go up to 126. Now, he was just the other night at Shushu Carrington's fight, and he did leave right after the fight was over. So it looked like maybe he was kind of scoping him out a little bit. But I'm not so sure if he's ready to go up to those bigger weights, though. I mean, you know, he tasted a knockdown himself the last time I'm, tell, I'm telling you right now me like uh bruce carrington that's a friend of mine me we love him we've had him on great guy yeah that's a very very close friend of mine me and him we actually went one and one in the olympic trials so we actually have a story you know for you know a little story to build off for whenever if, if we ever do fight you know that's that's my dog so yeah 
end of the day, like we both, he we he just hit me up probably about three or four days ago. And he was like, bro, like, I hope I get to him first before you. And, you know, <laughs> we were just talking about it because he wants to fight him too and I want to fight him. So it's just whoever gets to him first, well, me or him, I guarantee will be the ones to beat him. I, get, yeah. I guarantee it. Me or or Bruce Cancer will be the one to beat him. Yeah. Yeah, we love Shu. Do you, do you think it makes it harder to step into the ring and fight a guy? like shoe when you got like a friendship with him and there's like a, a history there does that does that add something to it no i mean in the, the day it's kind of like it's kind of like it, i think it kind of depends on how you are mentality wise like end of the day it's all respect and love to him like i don't wish him no harm like if we were to fight of course i'm gonna have to you know i and i'm and i'm sure he would have the same sentiment for me he would want to kick my ass i'm gonna have to kick his ass but it's yeah. like, after we get done fighting it's gonna be bro uh all love you know right and we'll hug and we'll have dinner or whatever the case may be we'll we'll kick it like we do you know we, we boys at the end of the day but it, it's business and on top of that we both gonna take home a big ass check so yeah but, you know that's the that's the whole the grand scheme of of, of the of the part of that we're both successful Man, and we're you know we're doing what we what we need to do. Now, what I love about your Facebook page, and you seem to have them ranked in the right order. You've got down father, and then I believe you have boxer, and then you have musical artist. So, explain a little bit about the musical journey, man. Like, what's the musical artist part? Like, what are you into? Oh, yeah, like, man, I've, I've um I, I'm a self taught self taught engineer. You know, I taught myself how to engineer music and everything. Um, I, I'm a multi genre artist. I I love metal. Like, I'm 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 a I love metal. I love metal, uh, rock, alternative, uh, pop punk, um, you know, hip hop, rap, R and B. I grew I grew up on nineties and eighties R and B. So yeah. I mean I literally just about any style, any genre, I, I can do it. And so, you know, I you I, 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 I have a very big um I, I just got a lot of stuff I could pull from, bro. Like a, a lot of stuff. I, I'm I'm not one dimensional by any means. Like I'm just multifaceted. I'm blessed by God to have all these abilities, and you know I tumble. Uh, like I said, I sing, rap, dance. I, I I tumble. So, you know, boxing was never my just end all or be all. You know what I'm saying? Like my goal is to get what I need to get out of boxing set a foundation for my use use boxing to set my foundation build a life for me and my me and my family me and my you know uh my my kid and future children and you know what i'm saying and, and go go about it and keep going you know what i'm saying like I, i'm i always wanted to be a master of entertainment I, that's what I, that's was always my ultimate game. I'm I, would, go ahead. I, would, I wouldn't consider myself multi multi faceted like you said but i would say i got bars though what? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you have to, you gonna have to, you know what I'm saying? Let, let, let me hear something for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, hey, I got we. I'm gonna add you on Facebook later, and I'm gonna send you something more because it's there. Or yeah. There. Now, do you feel like you're more like a behind the scenes guy because you talked about musical engineering, or do you like the idea of possibly being out on the stage and being the performer? No, I'm I'm a, I'm a natural performer. Like yeah. I'm just. I'm a natural born entertainer. Like I've been performing in front of crowds and shit since I was five years old. I used to do uh talent shows all over and stuff. That's I used to cool. do Michael Jackson, uh all all types of stuff, bro. So being in front of a crowd was never a thing for me. I, I love it. Like I, I thrive yeah. being, being in the spotlight. I'm that's just you know where I come alive. Now, from the time that you became a boxer, man, and you became a parent, and I saw your daughter look like in the background there when you first popped on here, man. How has your fighting style changed since you become a parent? Obviously, it's got to be a motivator. You're talking about providing for your family or whatever. How have you changed as a fighter since you became a father? Oh, man. I mean, really, that was obviously, like you said, that's the biggest motivation. I mean, I, before I even had a child, I was, I've always was raised to be extremely family-oriented. You know, I owe that to my grandmother, rest in peace. Yeah. You know, she she was she was the the roadmap of the family. Like it, it's crazy. My my grandmother knew all the bloodlines. She knew if your last name was this, she knew who was related to who and blah blah blah. Like, it, it was insane. Like my grandmother was really like a genius. I'm like a damn genealogy specialist yeah. <laughs> somehow. But basically yeah so you know growing up like that like i said i've just always been so big on family and it kind of all coincides because my name is the wolf you know what i'm saying i'm so it's like the wolf pack that's 
that actually has genuine organic meaning to me. Like it's not a gimmick or something I'm using to, you know, to get views or nothing like that. It's actually coming from a real, a real place. Like the, the I believe the the wolf is only as strong as the pack, and, and the pack is only as strong as the wolf. You know what I mean? So that's so, your boxing nickname, then? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. You know what, sign? I learned about the, the like wolves and animals. That's crazy. That blew my mind. The strong wolf acts the last pack. Because yeah. he he guards everybody. The rest of the pack, like he's the. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it's a good and it's a good boxing nickname too, man. Because boxing, good boxing. And I was gonna ask you that because we're big nickname guys, man. We've actually had a boxer on here that didn't have a nickname, and we freaking gave him one. Yeah, you know? I'm actually, <laughs> actually widely known as the White. Le I mean, huh? You know. Oh, stop! You are known as the White LeBron. Get out of here! Get out of here with that. <laughs> There's nobody in the world that calls him that. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, you be hooping too? Okay. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. I, the other night uh, on Sunday night, and now I can't walk for two days. Yeah. Hey man, no, see that's actually that's where my my sports journey started. I was a basketball player, and I actually I was re I was really good. I was really yeah. good basketball player, but um, man, I, I'm I'm five eight, bro. Like, and, and even in, in in school, I was shit. When I was in high school, I was about five foot one. I'm a, I'm a cool six four. Yeah, we're both six four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do we have your shit? Well, yeah. You know what? Don't give me give me give me. We laugh about that, but I'll, I'll, but, I'll, but, I'll, but, so. But in today's oh, NBA, in today's NBA though, we'd be considered short though. Six foot four wouldn't be anything. Now there's guys coming down handling the ball that are six seven, six eight. You know, I mean. Yeah, I mean, but you know, still, like as long as you kind of hit that six foot mark, you are, you are. Yeah, you, you should be all right. Yeah, NBA. In the. Shit, like I said, I'm me being five foot. I just had to be realistic. I was like, man, I ain't going to no damn NBA. And then, so by the time my sophomore year hit, I was about, I was about five, five, yeah. five, six. So then, yeah. my dad was like, son, and my dad's only five, seven, five, eight. So he was just like, son, you're not gonna get tall. You don't <laughs> jump high. You good. You could probably, you know, earn you a junior college or a junior scholarship, something like that. But yeah, I think you need a box, just straight up. And then I, I just listened, and he was right. So no, while, wait, 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 before we go any further, because I want to ask you something else. But because we talking hoops, we can't go any further without talking about LeBron and Mike. Oh, you settle it for us. <laughs> settle it for us. Settle it for us, Elijah. Settle it for us. I gotta go, Mike, man. I gotta um, go, Mike. I gotta go, Mike. Twenty-seven going with Mike. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, that's right. I got one. From, I got one from your generation. I'm an old. I'm an old head in spirit. Like I'm, I, I may Thank look, you. you know, I may look got the baby face and all that, but in, in spirit, I'm really 37 years old. You know, what I'm, what I'm 20. Saying? I'm 29 too, man. So, hey. I, 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 hey. I'm, with the, I'm with the Lebrons of the world. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, don't get me wrong, but Lebron, he definitely, you know, he he liked that special player, but I don't know. I just feel like. I just always admire the physicality of the old NBA. Like they there you just, go, there you go. Just, so, I don't know. It just so it was you different, bro. is you admire the less talented. You think so? Don't, don't let him shit on you, Elijah. I'm on your oh, side, man. He had nothing to do with necessarily <laughs> talent, but don't get me wrong. Uh, these guys now, these motherfuckers can shoot. Boy, they yeah, like, they're, everybody they're, can. He's just an alien, bro. There like, was, I think there was no place for Dennis Rodman in this league. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm yeah. making my, my point. And, like, yeah. skill-wise is different, bro. Brown's been playing against dudes who was all lit. Yeah. You know, I mean, I listen, know, man, stop George, trying to George, sway George, him. Stop. George, just the I'll, way that he, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't copy the originator. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was just yeah. the originator. He pioneered kind yeah. of what it meant to be that guy. Like, you know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, this is always my closing argument, Elijah. He's got the jump man tattoo on his leg. I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd settle it right there. Come on, man. Iconic. Hey. Iconic. Hey, Elijah, you're the one that let me get tatted before I was 18. Yeah, but, that's bad. That's well, bad parenting right well, there. That's I'm bad parenting. On, though, <laughs> hey, there's worse things. There's worse things your kids can be out there doing than getting tattoos. You know. Hey, I, I, hey, man. My, it's funny because my dad, he was, was close to. He, he had he got a couple of tattoos, but he was so against them and uh, don't get yeah. tattoos. And yeah. I remember I, I, it was after my first loss. I went through a depression. 
you know, whatever, whatever. And sure. that was when I just, I just said, you know what? Fuck it. And I just, I got blasted. I got all my tattoos within like two months. Yeah. Yeah. They get very addictive. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this now, man, because oh, I asked him about, because I was going to go on this uh, before I talked about the other shit. Okay. But I was going to ask you about, because I know Jake Paul and Mike Tyson just got sort of pushed back or whatever. Yeah. But I'm curious, like, what you think about, like, the gimmick fights and all that, like, YouTuber kind of stuff? I'm not going to lie. That, you think I'm, that's good I'm for not, the sport? Well, what did you say? You said the, I, I said, you think that's good for the sport? Do you like those kind of fights? I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. I, I'm not that much of a fanatic that I don't give a fuck. I don't. I really don't. Like, don't get me wrong. I do. I don't want to see Mike Tyson hurt because I, I don't like. I I have a certain respect for Mike Tyson. Like he was just because his his mental awareness and emotional intelligence. Like he's one of the guys who helped me persevere in this journey and box just because of the all the the tribulations and tough shit that he went through in his life you know are what i'm saying but it was the way that he it could hurt him huh are you saying that you think jake could hurt him for real he, yeah he could he could it's possible and the only yeah. re- and the only reason i'm saying that is just because we have to be honest bro father tom is, is fucking undefeated bro like no doubt. nobody nobody is beating father tom it's right just, it's what it is I don't yeah. care how much you in the gym. I don't care how strong you is. I don't care yep. how much punch you got. Father Tom undefeated. If 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 he gets hit in the right spot by Jay and Jake, and we've seen Jay do got some power. Yeah. If he catches Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson ass is going to bed. And I, I just would hate to see that. Like I Me really too. Be fucking pissed to see that. It would crush my whole childhood. So, so yeah. wait, before, before that goes on, something that I like seen through the grip. Day was you know being that fight got pushed back with Jake. Yeah, uh, there was something about Logan stepping in and fighting his own brother. What you think about that? Yeah, why the fuck, man? If that if that's not the most genius fucking play I've ever seen. Yeah, genius. That's marketing. I told you. <laughs> yeah, I, Mar- man, that is fucking genius marketing. Especially yeah, to use Mike Ty- if the, if yeah if the, if they did that purposely. Oh man, yeah, that would be pretty fucking cool, man. That would be pretty cool. We lost your camera there for a minute. Oh yeah, my bad. Somebody had called. That's all right. That's all right. And, and, and so I gotta ask you, man, since the topic of music came up, and, and you asked the gimmick fight, man, if uh, yeah, if Elijah Pierce is getting in the gym and he needs that song that pumps him up, or he's got to fight the round of his life and he needs the music to do that, man, what's the go-to track? Uh yeah. Um you need to fight the three minutes of your life, man, and you need that soundtrack in your head, man. What's the go-to song that you drop? Ooh, that's tough. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Your boy Shushu was on here with us, and he said, man, that he literally goes old school and goes back to the get rich or die trying. 50 cent. The greatest rock in rap history of all time. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's I, I'm a little different. It, I was it's between Okay, it's probably between two songs. Probably Mary J. Blige, uh, "My Life." Okay, oh, it probably be that uh, that wow. song, and then it would be because it just it's something about that song that just does something to me emotionally. It just yeah. like, that shit just make me like reflect on my like literally my life, and I just be just yeah. That's one of them ones. in a trance. Then um, it's this rock song. Um, uh, uh, oh, chop, chop, suey, my uh, system of it down. Oh, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. right? Yep, <laughs> come in, open a little makeup. Yeah, I'll be Yeah. Now, what do you think now? Uh, uh, you got a fight coming up June 28th. Uh, 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 so, what do we know about this guy? I mean, we know we're going to kick his ass, but what else do we know about him? Simple as that. His yeah. ass. His ass. His grass. He's got to see you. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, the my last, my last fight, I overlooked the guy. Simply, um, I, I was saying I was gonna knock his ass out first round, and yeah, you know, I just I didn't give it, I didn't give 
not one shit about him. And the only reason why was because, you know, I'm not perfect, man. Like, this is boxing. At the end of the day, we have to grow and we learn. God has literally been on my shoulder throughout this whole journey. And yeah. I'm grateful that he's, you know, giving me the platform and opportunity to do what I've done thus far. And, um, you know, but it was simple as that. Like, the, the guy, he was a three-time world title challenger at 118, not 122. So that's why his ranking didn't necessarily reflect that at 122. So, you know, being that and then just in general, like, I, I'm getting so much attention. I, all, all of a sudden, people are knowing my name. I'm signing autographs. Um, I'm kissing babies and shit, and nice. you know, just all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? It just, yeah, you know, it, 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 it 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 can get you a little a little um I would say unfocused a little bit sure. if, you're not, if you're not careful. So that's all it was, man. You know, I ended up get, taking a fluke drop. You know, I got he dropped me with a good shot, got back up and refocused, and then boom, I got his ass up out of there. And yeah, so kind of a champion, man. Yeah, that's what it is, and, you know. And it's just people are so. I, th I mean, they're just so uh, quick to vi uh, villainize people or or yeah. have an opinion, a negative opinion on something, just because it's. I don't know if they think that's cool or or that's just the thing now, but it, that kind of shit to me, it kind of like sullies the sport, in my opinion. I kind of like to call it. I kind of like to call it the Floyd Mayweather syndrome because I think a lot of people got so blinded by the fact that Floyd Mayweather kept his undefeated record intact. But I think everybody thinks that a successful career is defined by you having that O and, and and being unblemished. But I mean, all the greats in boxing, the majority of them have all been dropped and or suffered losses. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I call that the Floyd the Floyd effect. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, and I, I hate it. I fucking hate it. I honestly do. I mean, it's just that Maidana didn't beat the car out of that show, right? Yeah. And but, I think for years, one time. I said we're not gonna sit here and say that Coach Maidana didn't beat the tar out of that. Show, but I yeah. mean, I think Floyd might have a couple losses. He might have a couple. <laughs> that that first I ain't gonna lie, that first flight that I, that first fight was definitely fucking ass cheek close. I'm not gonna lie. But I, yeah. I, I do think Floyd edged it out. He <laughs> this was the first fight. That, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That shit was close. I ain't gonna lie. Floyd even was a little like, he was a little like, oh shit, like yeah. I see you can see it on his face. Yeah, but, but I think that, but, but I also think that's a big reason why for years, man, we didn't see the bets fighting the best. We hit a little low there where it seemed like the guys were too worried about putting up their undefeated record. No, it's still it's still like that, and that's that's just one of the uh, one of the consequences of the Floyd effect, and it it fucking sucks. That was yeah. one of the things that made my career what it is. That that's one of the reasons why I talk this shit how I talk it. Like that's it just it is what it is. No, nobody can ever deter me away from it because I fucking earned my right to talk shit. People yeah. don't understand what I had to go through to get here. Like you know, people, so if people want to vilify me, do whatever they need to do to make themselves feel okay while they sitting home eating ramen noodles, getting fucking fat and shit. I don't yeah. care. It I'm is. Fat. It is what it is. Like, huh? I said, I'm fat as fuck, Elijah. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're off the couch boxing, man. We're not getting off the couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah but like, you, you, you may make it moves though. I'm talking about, man, for the ones who, for the non-believers, underachievers, guys who uh, just who ain't doing shit, man. They just yeah. love to just get on, get on and hate on people who are actually doing something. But end of the day, like I said, I, I've, I've literally. Took no handouts in this shit. I've got it from ground zero. I've done everything I possibly could to be where I am. Whether that was taking pay cuts, whether that was having to travel to whoever the fuck's back uh, hometown to go fight them in front of their crowd, in front of their judges, knocking them out there. And also while still being myself, you know, everybody knows a one uh Feature everybody knows me for is is my wins. You know, I, I give gifts to, uh, to, I give gifts to the fighters that weigh in, uh, every fighter, and um, you know, even doing that, it's still in a in their hometown and knocking their ass out. Game so what's a typical guy. gift, man? Like, what do you give? Like, is it the same gift or is it a different no, gift no, every I, time? One, one guy, my the first one that I ever gave, I gave the guy a happy meal. I gave him a happy meal. 
and he didn't make weight, which was hilarious. And so I gave him a happy meal, and then I told him, I said, I'm gonna knock all, I'm gonna knock all the happy out your ass. And then I knocked him out. I like that. That's funny. Yeah. The second one was a walker. I gave him a walker. I said, here your early early retirement present. <laughs> be I be his ass. Oh, then, uh, I uh, was the third one. Oh yeah, it was. Um, his name was like Sweetness. His nickname was like Sweetness or some shit. And so I gave him some high heels, some uh, Christian Louis Vuittons. And I was like, "Here you go." I was like, "Here your boxing boots for tomorrow." Like I mean, I just kept it. I've been keeping it going ever since. Now, right now, your record's nineteen and two with sixteen knockouts. Do you feel like there's a pressure because you, you know you just alluded to the fact that we are still getting crappy uh, bo boxing decisions quite a bit, man? You know, you never know which way the scorecards are going to go. Do you feel like a pressure? Uh, you, you, you know, because obviously, when you got a record like that, you are going to get the label as being a quote unquote knockout artist. You know, I mean, you, you know, do you feel that's a fair assessment? I mean, you know, obviously knocking somebody out is the preferred method. That's a great way to go to not leave it to the scorecards. But do you feel that pressure now to get knockouts? Do you feel like that's what fans are looking for out of you? No, I mean, it, it's, it's hilarious because I was never known as a knockout artist before. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, and suddenly you look up and your whole, whole, your whole record's almost knockouts. That's what I'm saying. And it was crazy. I was I was the guy people used to say didn't have no power and didn't this and that and third. And it was crazy because my record always has reflected that. If, if you go back and look at my record from when I first started, I was 8-0, and oh, 7 knockouts. Yeah. That's why I had my first loss. But – you know, it just, I don't know. But e either way, yeah, I mean, I, lo I love getting out. I I I'm always going to go for the knockout. I think just about every fight I, I, I fight in is going to, most, most of them are going to result in a knockout just because of how I fight. I'm, I'm just a ferocious dude. Like, I, I'm, I'm coming to put your ass out. I'm coming yeah. to, to, to batter you. It's not, it, it, like, I'm not coming to defeat you. I'm coming to whoop your ass. Like, I'm coming to defeat you. I'm coming to... To to just straight up brutalize you and that's just they it's just that's just how it is, man. That's how I that's how I have to be in order for people to really understand. I think like to really understand how bad uh how bad I really want this shit. Hey, you look small, man. I'm a hundred pounds heavier than you. I wouldn't scratch. But hey, oh, I know you're not kidding, man. You look fantastic, man. And so. So what's the timetable? Have you and your team discussed the timetable on like when you'd like to be in there fighting for a world title? What's the time frame on that? How many more fights down the road are we thinking you're gonna be stepping in between those ropes for a, a world title? I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking by uh early next year. Early twenty twenty five. You know Actually, when we had Shu on here, his time frame was the same. Early twenty twenty five, he said he'll be getting a, a strap. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we just we just talked probably about three days ago. Like I said, yeah. So yeah, I, we we both kind of on the same. You know, I I have more fights than him, of course, but you know he does have a, a bigger name than me. And yeah. so um, I don't know. I, it's just something I would always kind of fucking think about all the time because he did the smart thing, and I wish I would have done it. So uh, I just wish I would have did it, but. Like when when we both fought and we and we beat each other in uh Olympic trials, he stayed amateur. I turned pro because I end up my uh my ex wife end up uh, pregnant with my daughter. So yeah, you know of course I, I kind of freaked out. Oh, I gotta I gotta make it happen. I gotta you know yeah to do. So I just turned pro. But that's natural though. Yeah, of course. So you know you're going to kind of scramble mode. Stay, if I would have stayed amateur just a little bit longer, because I had. I had just broken through in the amateurs. I started making it first, second, you know, third, and in, in the nat at, at the national tournament, they're meant out of nowhere. Like people didn't even know. They just like my name became buzzing like in the amateurs really quick. Like it just out of nowhere. I just started making it to first and second, third. You know, at, at about I went to about three or four national tournaments, and then boom. And then I had to turn pro. So if I would have stayed and really tried to go for the Olympics, I think I would have definitely made the Olympic team. Yeah. So well, I know I asked you earlier about your idols and stuff. You said you really didn't have any. But if you had to put together a Mount Rushmore of boxers, who would be your four Mount Rushmore? Now, believe it or not, we've had guys on here that didn't even know how many faces were on Mount Rushmore. So, I mean, <laughs> but it is four. 
No, nah, see, man, it, it, it's different. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to, cause I, I don't feel like there. I can't really speak for everybody else. I can only speak for me. This so, is yours, okay. right? My my personal yeah. Mount Rushmore, which has helped the Wolf a lot to Pierce. You know, identify himself in the world of boxing. No doubt. You know, what I'm saying that I, it would be Floyd. It would definitely be Floyd. No, no, I was. I gotta say Muhammad Ali first. Definitely yeah, but I leave first. He gets a lot of love on here. Yeah, always. Or I, I leave first. I mean, just I mean, he's just the literally the archetype of, of the inventor of trash talk. The yeah, king. showmanship, everything, just the whole nine. Yeah, no uh, Ali, fucking um, yeah, Floyd. I got yeah, I gotta say Floyd. Um. Floyd's been a savvy businessman too. He's done it in and out of the ring. He, you know, he is a good blueprint. He is, he is a good blueprint. Exactly. Um, Emmanuel Augustus. Ooh, Ooh, the drunken master getting some love on here tonight. For like sure. I mean, if if anybody has really, if, if if you go back and watch my videos, that was oh my god, I've gotten so many comparisons to him. It's unreal. Yeah. But um, cheated out of a lot. Yeah, cheated out of a lot of victories. Poor guy. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's the last one's hard. I'm Henry Armstrong. Henry Ooh, Armstrong. Taking it back into history. Hey, man, you know, especially as a black fighter, man, you know what I mean? He's one of those guys that was doing it and doing it back in a time when it was difficult, you know, from a racism standpoint, too. You know, he was dealing with a lot of that shit. He's like the Jackie Robinson of boxing. Man, Henry Armstrong was a motherfucker. Monster. Monster. Ooh, yeah. People out there that don't know their boxing history, man. That's a guy to go look up right there, man. For sure. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of the guys that I really genuinely study are older fighters, for sure. Yeah. Man. Yeah, you're an old soul inside. You're an old soul. Yeah, fucking like Orlando Canazales. I just had him out a couple weeks ago. Huh? <laughs> I just had him out a couple weeks ago. Get the Orlando. fuck out of for real? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll send you a link to the channel. I'm sure you'll love a lot of the episodes. We had Shoe on. We had a ball talking to Shoe. We talked about New York food. We talked about music. We talked about all kinds of shit with Shoe. But yeah, we've had a lot of great legends on here. We're about 125 episodes deep. The only father son boxing podcast out there, man. This is it. That? That's dope. Yeah. yeah, send me that link. I definitely want to check that out. I will. I will. Not that's, that's, yeah, that's dope. I'll tell you what, Elijah, man, it's been great having you on here, man. You're a great young guy, man. Do me a favor. Please stay in touch, man. We'd love to have you back on again, man. It's fun as hell oh, chopping man. it up with you. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm, I'll be more than more than yes. honored to do that, man. Like I said, y'all got, you know, y'all got my contact. Just let yes. me know. Like I said, yes. 28th, back I'm on the hunt continues is my motto. Wait, what did you say, bro? I'm about to send you through some rats, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do that, bro. Yeah. Like I said, hey, hey, I, I, I'll throw you on the future. I got, man. I, I, I want to ask you, how many records do you record, um, in a week? I mean, I don't really get to the booth anymore because I got my kids and stuff. Now I'm, I'm more like kind of grown and not that lane no more. But I mean, before, before that, though, it was a lot, dude. Yeah, he's got a couple of EPs. He's got a couple of EPs. He's got a couple EPs up on uh, on Apple Music. Yeah. yeah, like I said, me me too. So I, okay, cool. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna check each other out. I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. You. It was great talking to you, Elijah. We really appreciate this, man. This was a hell of a lot of fun, man. We appreciate it. Stay in touch, man. We'll do it again, my man. No doubt. And uh, just just so I can, you know, just reiterate too. What what's the the? Do y'all have a name? The name of this uh, podcast? Off the couch boxing. Off the couch boxing. Gotcha. Yeah. Man. Well, salute to off the couch boxing. Got the Wolf, Elijah Pierce, the W Triple X that left. The hunt continues. We back June 28th. Make sure y'all tune in. Main event on the zone is going down. Mm. We top four in the world. We soon to be number two. And then after that, we number one. And then give us a message for a new one, man. Even though he can't speak a lick of English, man. If you got to send out a message to uh, uh, Niowa Inui. The Wolf's oh, coming from? I call, call, call his ass Anywho. His name is Anywho. <laughs> So, Mr. Anywho, get, get your fans in order. Tell them to get out my goddamn DM, all that chatter, chatter boxing. Like I said, I, I want your head. You got to yeah. go. He got to go. Him, yeah. Ryan Saleem, MJ, Casemiro, fucking whoever's in my way, they got to go. Simple as that. Like, I'm, I'm not playing attitude. with nobody. I'm going to be champ at 122. I'm going to be that, going to be the champ.
Point I blank. love that, man. I love it. Keep us in mind, man. Keep us in mind when anything's coming up, man, to, to promote, man. Come on here, man. Chop it up with us, man. Absolutely, man. Y'all take it easy. Have a great yeah. night. Yeah. Appreciate you, brother. Good talking to you, my man. Likewise. Later, brother. There he goes, folks. The wolf. <laughs> Elijah Pierce, man. You heard him, man. Cracking that top five at 122, man. And he's coming for everybody. Dropping names like Casamayor. Uh, of course, the big, the you know, the big name there, Niowa, uh, in a way, uh, uh, you know, he's dropping names. He's dropping names, man. I love the confidence, man. Love everything that young man stands for, man. He's he, he's doing it, and he's doing it the right way. Yeah, what a, what what a great what a great young man. What a great guy, man. Yeah, great guy, man. Great guy. Wish him nothing but luck, as he said, man. Tune in June twenty eighth, man. Uh, no one's gonna fucking drop. I'm tapped in. Yeah, we're, yeah, off the couch boxing, our fans, man, uh, always team Elijah, man, and, uh, you know, we'll be there backing him every step of the way, man. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Big shout out to Elijah the Wolf Pierce, man. Make sure to like and follow us on the great Facebook, which is not always so great because every time I want to reach out to guests, they want to fucking ban me, but still, we're on there. We are on there. And the man is back to tell you, in the words of the great Gary Busey, I can go 15 seconds with anything. And make sure if you got your peepers on this episode right now to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, stay tapped in for the best boxing conversations. Nobody chops it up with all your favorites from the fight game like we do here on Off the Couch Boxing. So let me remind you all that if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the champs.